Jarvis, contributing editor for Across the Fence. Today I'm going to share a part of my life that not many people know about. Way back in 1979, I first visited Cancun and have been coming back every year since. Not just because of the warm sunny days, but more the close friends that I have made along the way. They remain a constant, while everything else in Cancun continues to change. Back in 1967, a computer search by the Mexican government selected a deserted strip of sand beach inhabited by a few Mayan fishermen to build a mega resort. Mexico and international investors spent billions of dollars on the risky venture that luckily for them has returned handsome profits. Cancun now has a population of more than 700,000 people that last year welcome more than 5 million visitors. I find that mind-boggling as I was there from its meager beginnings. This is a photo of my mother and me back in January of 1979, my first visit to Cancun that sits on top of Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula. We stayed at Dos Playas, typical of the hotels at the time, small, quiet, and just steps from the white sand Caribbean beach. It was a perfect place to escape the January freeze in Vermont and the very next year, I bought two weeks of timeshare units at the Viva Hotel for $9,504. These are the official documents. I passed three decades of happy getaways at Viva, always inviting family and friends to enjoy this tropical paradise along with me. The growing popularity of Cancun brought about changes in ownership of Viva. It's now the Dream Sands with 165 rooms and its expansion and conversion to an all-inclusive. Definitely not my cup of tea. So I moved across the street to the Cancun Clipper Club that faces the Nichupte Lagoon, and it has been here for as long as I can remember. It's economical, quiet, and within walking distance of all the things that I am familiar with. And here's why I enjoy the place so much. Don't be alarmed by that sign as the heavy-duty fence keeps crocodiles away and it's a good thing. Because they are in the lagoon. You see it there thinking about making that blue hair in its lunch. Deciding that it wasn't worth the effort, the massive creature lumbered on shore, leaving it gasping for breath and me glad to be on the other side of the fence. The massive rush to make all things bigger and better left much of what I enjoyed most about Cancun behind. This is what remains of the once magnificent Maya Fair Plaza. The shops, restaurants and galleries are deserted, taking away the charm and that special feeling of being in old Mexico. Say nothing about the impact it's had on those who are not able or invited to be a part of this massive change. Even on Avenue Tulum, the main street in downtown Cancun, the effect is being felt and once busy shops are now for rent. And those that remain try to entice the few tourists who leave the all-inclusives with sales or two-for-one specials. This is the large Ultra Femme shop, specializing in perfumes and skincare products, waiting for customers. This corner holds many memories, as here used to be Dan's Hamburgers, owned and operated by my friends Jack and Margarita Davis, 
What fun and good meals we had here. They and their girls had left Michigan to be a part of that dream in the Mexican jungle, and we remained friends until their passing a few years ago. Now, four generations later, I remain close to their granddaughter Wendy, her husband Noe, and their three children. Oldest daughter Nikki is attending college in Mexico City, and the twins are in elementary school. On my every visit to Cancun, we stop at a nearby Burger King because the twins love the play area, giving us quiet time to visit after lunch. The twins grow so fast between visits, I can never tell them apart. I am Trujillo. I am Yuska. On January 6, 1980, at the Pyramid of the Magician, a part of the Mayan ruins at Uxmal, I met Elvis Salub and his wife-to-be, Eldi. They were on a school outing and lived in the nearby village of Mashganu. We bonded and have been close friends for almost four decades now. This photo is from 1983 with daughter Faraday. They have moved to Cancun and have three children. The two boys are in college in Mexico City, and Faraday helps at the family-run store. But the Salub story doesn't end here. I continue to journey back to Mashkanu to spend time with the family every year. These are the parents of Elvis and to the right his aunt that we call Tia. She passed away at the age of 99, and I still remember the tortillas she made for us over a wood fire in the backyard. His parents, well into their 80s, have taught me to speak a little of their Mayan language. Bashka Wali translates to how are you? When I first met Hector, one of their grandchildren, he was only four and I have seen him grow into a young man, now an administrator for the Yucatan school system. He is married to Emiliana and they have two children, Gael and Michelle, and after hugs all around, a family walk to town is first on the agenda. Being Sunday, Mass was being celebrated at the church. Let's take a peek inside. Just outside was a giant Rosca de Reyes, the king's cake, enjoyed every January 6th to celebrate the three wise men who brought gifts to baby Jesus. Shaped in the round to signify a huge crown, the sweet bread holds a special surprise. Baked inside is a small plastic figure representing baby Jesus. Whoever cuts the piece hiding the baby is obligated to host a party on February 2nd, Candelaria Day, and serve corn tamales and hot chocolate. And no, I didn't get the doll. Now let's enjoy some more sights and sounds of mashed Ganu on a Sunday morning. After a quick lunch of puchero, fresh vegetables and chicken and broth, we were on our way to Ashkentok. Located about five miles from Mashkanu, it is a Mayan ruin dating back to 300 AD and was continually inhabited for some 700 years. As you climb through the ruins, it begins to feel like you are discovering some long lost site, being so far off the beaten path with few restrictions in tourists. All Mayan ruins have a ball court, and during its restoration, a circular hole was found, believed to be an ancient bath used by the ball players to cool off after a strenuous game in the hot sun. Oshkentok, which means three flint stones, is guarded by the men of stone that once held spears in their left hand, wearing mesh vests and protective headgear, a warning for intruders to think twice about an attack. The longer one explores here, you can easily picture this ancient city bustling with activity 
and imagine distant relatives of the Saloub family caring for their children, crops, and animals. When visiting the Saloub family, I stay at the Plaza Caribe Hotel in Merida, the capital and largest city of Yucatan founded back in 1547. Nearby is the Cathedral of San Ildefonso, one of the oldest in the Americas and the most beautiful in this city of some 800,000 people. Luckily, I was in Merida to help celebrate its 574th birthday, and what a party it was. Enjoy along with me. This is Jorge Hernandez Jr. He is 20 years old and attending college in Merida, studying to be an engineer like his father. I met Jorge Sr. here in Cancun in 1982, and we have been close friends ever since. I was at his graduation party in 1988 and a witness at his marriage to Rosario in 1991. Well, it is my pleasure to introduce two people that have come from Mexico to join In 2004, they came to Vermont with their friends Roger and Lisandra Bautis, and I was honored to have Rosario and Lisandra appear on Across the Fence to make pozole, a traditional Mexican stew. We put on top lettuce, radish, mm -hmm. we have the uh, lemon. Mm -hmm. Now they have teamed up again to prepare another meal to celebrate our friendships of more than three decades. Their children are growing up so fast. To the right is Juan Pablo, Jorge Jr.'s brother, along with Sabrina and Tavo, the children of Roger and Lusandra. I have become a part of the family and am honored to be called Uncle Lynn. What a pleasure it is to see how well these families, especially the children, are doing from year to year. They know that I love three milk cake, so that is always on the menu Bueno, Lynn, espero que regreses pronto. Along with heartfelt wishes for a happy and healthy new year and a safe journey back to Vermont. <laughs> this is Wilbur Yam Marine. I met him almost 30 years ago selling souvenirs at the Key Week Market in downtown Cancun. Here he is many years later with his wife and children. He is now sales manager at Rosanoi in the hotel zone and close to the Clipper Club, so I walked over for a surprise visit with my annual Christmas gift. There he is. Hola, Wilbur. I'm back in Cancun. Hi, Lynn. Nice to see you again. Thank you, and here's your calendar. Oh, thank you. Muchas gracias. This video, taken back in 1997, shows my friend Carlos Alcocer dancing with the National Folkloric Ballet of Mexico at Escaret. He is there to the right. He started dancing when he was in high school and performed with the company for 30 years. Now he is a supervisor for Best Day Travel at the Cancun International Airport and got tickets for us to visit Escaret and would join us after work. How Escaret has changed since I first visited in 1983. There are a few paths beside an underground river and a lagoon to look for sea turtles. Now that same lagoon is enjoyed by tourists from around the world who come to enjoy Escaret, a jungle that has been converted into an ecological park. The underground river now carries small boats that take you to places of unbelievable beauty. Afternoon passed quickly and it was time to head over to the new amphitheater to watch the performance on a much larger stage. But it won't be the same without our friend Carlos. The show begins with a depiction of the Spanish invasion of Mexico and ends with traditional dances from around the country. I wish we had time to show you more, but here are some of the highlights. <laughs>
For Across the Fence, I'm Lynn Jarvis with memories of almost four decades of my adventures here in Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula. It's quite a story and I'm glad I could share it with all of you. Gracias, mi amigos, and hasta luego.